Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. I'll give you a hint. I'm really excited that today I get the opportunity to say the word Bandersnatch. Wait for it. It's coming. Once more down the rabbit hole we go with this sequel to 2010's massive hit, Alice in Wonderland, which was itself a sequel, sorta, to the animated Disney classic of the same name. And through this long, strange trip of constantly diminishing returns, we arrive at this big, dumb sequel that nobody asked for, but that was practically guaranteed after the Tim Burton-directed version grossed over a billion dollars worldwide. Alice Through the Looking Glass should not exist. Its story doesn't even supply any good reason for it to exist, other than as a silly, visually interesting 3D eye candy. And on that level, it actually kinda works. Perfect for very small children, or very intoxicated stoners, who won't care about things like strong character motivations, overacting, or coherent themes, Alice Through the Looking Glass is a kinda terrible movie, and one I thoroughly enjoyed. It's an experience that I can honestly recommend, but also can't defend. I can't defend it! I can barely even adequately describe it, but I was never bored by it. That's it for the capsule review, let's get in depth! Alice Through the Looking Glass is visually rich, and also exceptionally silly. It's imaginative, and it's really weird, and it's it's overly simple, and it's convoluted. Ugh. Curious and curious and... Look, if you've got young girls, it's got a headstrong, positive, feminist role model for them to emulate. It passes the Bechdel test with flying colors, and it's got enough action and eye candy to keep young kids of both genders entertained. It's also insane. Purely and utterly insane. And I realize that word is the same one I'd use to praise something like Mad Max Fury Road, so let me qualify that. I am not using that as a compliment. It's not exactly an insult either. It's more like a condition that you must accept before proceeding. This movie is bonkers. It cannot justify its own existence. And right off the bat, that disqualifies loads of potential viewers that won't be able to get past that. Here's what I mean when I say this movie shouldn't even exist. It doesn't have anything new to add to the story. It doesn't even have any new directions for our characters to grow. Nothing new for them to learn, really. So instead, it just journeys back to the past, giving origin stories to characters who really didn't need them, like the Mad Hatter or the Red Queen. Personally, I blame it on the success of Wicked. We don't need to see how the Mad Hatter became mad, or how the Red Queen became both obsessed with people's heads or got such an oversized noggin herself. But whoo boy, this movie's gonna serve up those details to us as part of the movie's main plot, which involves time travel. And the character of time, as personified by Sasha Baron Cohen, doing his best Christoph Waltz impression for no apparent reason. And he is actually pretty great, more often than not. Here's one of his best moments. She took something from me. I will not say what it was. It's not important. It is a trifle. I must have it back. But not that I'm concerned. As soon as possible. Either way, I'm fine with the outcome. Huh? Give it to me. Also, the addition of time travel is actually a fun idea, and it's visually fascinating to look at, but the complicated hoops the script jumps through to get to the fun stuff, including Alice's return to Wonderland, for the stupidest possible reason. Basically, Absalom the Butterfly goes all the way back to our world to retrieve Alice because the Mad Hatter is acting weird. I mean, weirder than usual, and the whole Wonderland crew thinks that Alice can cheer him up. Yes, seriously, that's the impetus behind the entire plot. It's so lame. The whole plot about the Red and White Queen's sibling rivalry, which has resulted in countless deaths, by the way, all boils down to a little girl lying about eating the last pastry. Uh, look, every motivation for the character's actions, even to a lesser extent, Alice's, they're so weak and flimsy. They're totally not worth hanging a whole movie's plot on, so the movie, at its foundation, is stupid. Its action isn't justified, the acting is 
Look, someone took the leash off of Johnny Depp, and I know what you're about to say. You didn't even know he had one, but he is mugging and lisping and wobbling his way into the stratosphere here. But the even bigger violator, by the way, is Anne Hathaway. Oscar winner Anne Hathaway. What is she doing with her, her hands the whole time? Like, <laughs> like, what is this stuff, man? There is no history of it happening, but it is said that if it were to happen, everything would be history. When you are a human in a scene with a bunch of cartoons and you look over the top, I think you're doing it wrong. Just about everyone from Wonderland returns. Absalom, may Alan Rickman rest in peace, the Tweedle Twins, the March Hare, even the Bandersnatch. <laughs> there it was, I'll say it again, Bandersnatch. Although I've got to say my favorite character, the old Cheshire Cat, was a little underserved. Attention Disney, in the future I could use a lot less hat and a little more cat. In the end, Alice Through the Looking Glass is going to be, for me at least, a guilty pleasure movie like last year's Tomorrowland and Jupiter Ascending that I personally will watch repeatedly, always a little bit ashamed, but always fascinated by their failure. Through the Looking Glass is a glorious mess, and I had fun hating it, had fun being awed by the visual inventiveness of many scenes, while I was simultaneously awed by the inane plot machinations that got the characters to those moments in the first place. By the end, I was actually in suspense as to what would happen. I was visually knocked out by what I was seeing, and I ended up having more fun with it than I should have. I also didn't mind, in the end, how much scenery chewing was being done by the cast because, hey, when the scenery contains so much eye candy, I kind of want to chew on it myself. As pointless as the flashbacks were, I actually found them to be fun. The cool little steampunk creatures that hang around the character of time. I also really loved the bookend sequences set in the real world with feminist icon Alice as the swashbuckling captain of a merchant ship of all things. Now, every time I get excited remembering this part or that part, I have to remind myself how stupid it was on an intellectual level. This back and forth, it's fun, it's crap, it's fun, it's crap. <laughs> it's, it's making me a little mad, I tell you, mad! But then again, the best people are. In the end, I give Alice the Looking Glass, after much deliberation, a medium bag of popcorn. If you're a film snob, and I certainly am one of those, you can go ahead and skip it, and I'll understand. I won't defend this film at all, because I really can't. But if you're a parent, or okay, a pothead, feel free to check your brain at the door, tune in, turn on, drop out, and just enjoy the ride. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos, and more importantly, click subscribe, so you can keep up with all the latest episodes, and so we can keep doing what we do. Please leave your comments below, and click the thumbs up icon to indicate that you like what you heard. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I am out of town.